Uh, with on-demand mobile phone apps and subscription sites, children can now find all the shows they want pre pretty much whenever they want them. Yes, uh, coupled that with the fact that lots of them prefer to watch their favourite programmes and video clips on tablets, it's no surprise to hear that they now spend more time online than in front of your average TV set. Yes, researchers have described it as a landmark shift in viewing habits. Our technology correspondent Rory Catherine jones has more. In an age when tablets and smartphones give us instant access to all kinds of viewing material, our media habits are changing rapidly. But it's children who may be showing us what the future looks like. The Childwise survey of 5 to 16 year olds shows they're watching an average of 2.1 hours of traditional TV a day. But that's been overtaken by the three hours they spend online. That may be because two thirds of them now own a tablet computer and YouTube is top of the list of their favourite websites. Children are, are moving away from watching linear television, uh, more towards watching television when they want to watch it, uh, where they want to watch it, so on tablets, on on-demand services such as YouTube, for instance. Uh, but there is still a place for children to watch television uh, with their families um, on the weekends, sort of the Saturday night slot. In just a few years, children have got used to playing and viewing on all sorts of screens. We asked these young visitors to the London Toy Fair what they preferred. When you're on your phone, you can text and you can get in contact with your friends and you, you can watch TV, so I think I'd rather use my phone. With the telly, you can't play games and there's like not a lot of options of what to, you can do. Children are still watching plenty of television. But in the touchscreen era, they're demanding greater control over what they view and when. Rory Kathleen Jones, BBC News. Well, here with us to talk about this this morning are Julie Ryan and her son Alfie. Good morning. Good morning to you both. And in good our morning. London newsroom, Hi. the psychologist Corinne Sweet. Right, good morning to you. Anyway, Alfie then, how, you're 11 years old? Yes. How much time do you reckon you spend uh, watching your, looking, is it your tablet you look at or is yeah. it a laptop? Tablet. And how much time do you spend on it a day, do you think? About two and a half hours. Do you use it, is that just for watching what we call telly stuff, or is it uh, doing what, doing games and homework for school? Um, it's usually just TV, YouTube, um, some games sometimes, but mostly not mm. okay. games. So if he's watching on his tablet, presumably you're not watching the same thing? Not. Not often, no. <laughs> and how has it impacted on your sort of home life then, the fact that you're not perhaps sharing, sharing I don't know, experiences yeah. or watching things together? Well, I think really we've, we've tried to embrace it and look at the positives. I don't really think you can fight against it because I think it's just inevitable really that that's the way it's, the you know, TV and, you know, viewing is evolving. But um, I think at least we're in the same room. If I'm listening to the radio or reading a book, um, he's on his tablet, he might be watching a film or he might be playing a game or he might be looking at YouTube, but we are in the same room um, because my biggest fear is limiting it and actually monitoring it. So I find if we're in the same room together, at least I've got an idea of what's going on. Is that annoying yeah. having mum in the same room? Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's yeah. just like it. Yeah. Uh, Corinne, what does this say, what does this study say about our family lives and the, the way they're changing, do you think? Well, I think the thing is that we're becoming more fragmented because we're all going to our separate corners. And I think this does actually affect how we communicate with each other. There was that old thing that you'd all sit round the telly, a bit goggle-boxy, and you'd all talk about a programme. I think probably War and Peace is possibly doing that for many people at the moment. But I think when you live in a household and you're very separate, I think it does begin to change how we relate to each other. And I think most families probably need to have a digi-free moment where if you're eating a meal, you literally have to turn things off or you have to find a way of limiting screen time. I don't think it's possible to be a sort of digital canute and say get rid of technology because that's just impossible. But I think family life and communication needs some TLC, really. Mm. Uh, it's not just family life. Lots of people making the point that children now have, you know, a part of many schools are using tablets as part of school, so homework is on the tablet. So is there any escape, even when children, for example, are at school, is there any escape from always being on a screen? Well, I think there has to be, and I think some people are beginning to feel they've had too much, so we have a sort of digital detox movement growing where people have to actually literally 
put the gadgets down, turn them off. One of the issues about screens, it's a very private, individual experience. It does affect your eyes if you just constantly look down at close range. And I think opticians are finding that people are not learning to look up and accommodate with, you know, long distance. And that actually means that we become more short-sighted more quickly. Um, but in terms of short-sightedness, in terms of family life, that's also a problem because I think we're all having our individual experiences and it's very important to have things that you share and you can communicate and argue and, and joke about. Otherwise, we're living in very individualised lives. Uh, Julia, it was suggested many years ago when TV started that it would be the death of family communication yeah. could, because we wouldn't talk to each other. We'd all just be watching the goggle yeah. box, so to speak. But now people say that's what brings families together. So do yeah. you as a family watch much TV? No, we no. don't. We hardly ever watch the TV, really? do we? Yeah. yeah. And we've actually moved it into the dining room because um, I think, really, there's only so much children's TV I, as a parent, can watch. But there's other programmes you might watch with your, your family, Alfie, don't you think? Um... It depends if it's something really special that's only on TV once, or if it's something I really like. Right. Okay, what sort of thing might be really special, for example? Like, if the new series of Russell Howard's Good News comes on or something like oh, that. Oh, that's a terrible programme. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> terrible. Not allowed to watch that. <laughs> yeah, pretty much every week. It's, uh, do you think, though, that, that this does damage the fabric of family? I think you've got to try and limit the fact that it does, really. You've got to work hard so it doesn't. I mean, we eat at the table together. Yeah. We will watch a film together on the tablet at the weekend. Or last night we sat down and watched just um, a small portion of a film before he went to bed. And I don't allow games or YouTube after 7pm and things like that. I've got to try and keep on top of it. But I think we are fighting losing battle, mm. really, if we don't embrace it. I want to ask Corinne about something. And, and Alfie, you are not guilty about this, so let's be really clear. <laughs> um, some people are pointing out that children... Um, they've noticed are losing the ability to hold eye contact as well. Is that something that you've seen you're concerned about? I think eye contact is very important. I was on the tube the other day and I watched everybody was screen, phone, down, eyes down. And I thought that's why we have so much internet dating because nobody's looking at each other on the tube. And I think in family life you do have to have boundaries. You have to have digital free moments, meals, uh, all sorts of things where you actually will look at each other and talk. And I think communication is very important to family life. And if you all got very disparate experiences, you can't find a common language. And I think making eye contact when you speak, being able to watch somebody's face, it's all part of being a human being. And I think later on in life, it will get harder to get jobs, to find partners, to fall in love. I think these things are very important. You do eat together as a family, do you, yes, Julie? Yes, we do, yeah. OK, so you have conversations then? Yeah. Yes. Presumably about what you've just been watching on your tablet? Yes. <laughs> Quite often. All right. You can't be bothered listening to Jacksepticeye all dinner, can you? No. No. <laughs> yes. Well, we'll leave that discussion for a yes. little time. <laughs> Alfie, Julie, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Corinne, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. Thank you. Uh, 17 minutes past eight. Uh, this is Breakfast from BBC News. Our main story is here this morning.